Let's go. Oh! <laughs> A special Tesla racing episode for you here today with Thomas Nautico Fuel in 4K full screen, full length with the Tesla Model S Plaid track pack. That means hardware changes and software changes to the track mode. We'll tell you all about it or everything you need to know. Super interesting. And the central piece of the track pack are these brakes here, carbon ceramic brakes, and they give you better braking performance both on the road and on the racetrack. And we will test it on the racetrack as well. And these wheels here, these are the 20 inch wheels forged wheels this is also part of the track pack and the tires these are the semi-slick goodyear supercar 3r they are at the moment street legal in the us not yet street legal in the european union they are working on the homologation though that they will also be legal then in the eu we will today test also two different tire and wheel setup we'll start with the michelin pilot sport 4s and they are already street legal in Europe. And then we'll later on test this setup here with the forged wheels, 20 inch, and also the semi-slick racing tires and see about the difference. The funny thing is that the track mode basically in the vehicle, by sensors in the wheels, it realizes which wheels are mounted and only when you have the carbon ceramic brakes, the top speed of 325 kilometers an hour or 200 miles per hour, the maximum top speed is then unleashed. And then also the tires are being recognized. So both the brakes and the tires. And then the car also changes the track mode accordingly. For example, the air suspension goes stiffer. Overall here, the Model S Plaid in this recent update, it's almost an all new generation, you can really say, because from the 2012 Model S, they kept the doors basically, but everything on the inside, chassis wise, the casting in the front, they used like dual casting in the front and in the rear, so overall four, a little different to the Model Y and the Model 3, which just has a casting in the front and in the rear, so overall just two. But everything also electric motor and so on, everything basically changed. So you could actually say that this is an all new Tesla Model S. Overall 1000 horsepower from one electric motor in the front and here for the Plaid model, two electric motors in the rear. I got the key car to the Model S and holding it here at the B pillar, then you can see here these flush door handles, they come out like this. So, and then door closing sound. Yeah, I mean, it's frameless and therefore also not that good, actually. This is here the cream interior. You can get white and even brighter one or in black. You can choose that. And you can also choose the steering wheel. This is the normal steering wheel in the new Model S. You remember last time we had the yoke steering wheel. You can also compare the review of that. I really prefer this one here. It's just easier to ease it around in the parking lot and so on. But you can see that the turning indicators are also the same way on the steering wheel. And I can tell you while driving, especially when you're fast driving, sometimes you accidentally hit that. But here the blue exterior to the cream interior, that's a beautiful setup isn't it? Seating position here in the Model S, to me, the main aspect is it's way better than in the Model 3 because the seats here in this updated version are just so much better. Soft, it's all animal-free, a high-grade leatherette, perforated, also with cooling available. I'm really happy with the seats and the focus, of course, will always be on road driving. And for road driving, to me, they're really very good indeed. If they also hold you tight enough on the track, we'll find out very soon. Special to the new Model S is that you can tilt the screen here, passenger, center, or also towards the driver. But then, of course, we want to take a look at the track pack. We can, of course, also change the appearance here to light and you can see it better, a little bit better on camera. And here you also have the track mode that is also available for normal Model S Plaid. But this track mode here, together with the track pack hardware changes, also has different parameters than, for example, the suspension then is even stiffer. And you can also customize everything. For example, the handling balance. 50-50 is best balance, definitely. This year, 40-60 would be more rear wheel bias. Preparing for the cheetah stance. Now the front end lowers. Preparing, ready to launch. Let's go. Oh! <laughs> Oh my 
my god. Woo! Holy moly. What the? Oh. Woo! <laughs> the hell? What top speed did we reach? I, I couldn't even read it myself because I had the camera mounted there. Whoa! This is like anything else you could ever experience in acceleration. Whoa! I'm lost for words. <laughs> Real lost for words, guys. <laughs> Welcome to Thomas's Tesla Racing Driving Lounge. And we're starting here with a configuration of 21-inch wheels, carbon ceramic brakes, and the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S. And that means these are the tires that are street legal in Europe, not ideal for the track, and we'll find out about the difference very soon. First of all, in general, you feel the acceleration is, of course, gigantic. So it's really great for the racer to have this instant acceleration there is no delay at all. Wow, and these two electric motors at the rear at the moment have said 4060. So the test drivers here said that would be the best setup for this, this track here. Secret Paul Ricard is we're driving a small section of it at the moment. And that means I have some rear wheel bias to get out of the corners. At the same time, the front electric motors are also pulling me out. Wow, and this is look at that acceleration here, almost 180 kilometers an hour. Now hard on the brakes and these carbon ceramic brakes, they prevent the so-called fading effect so that you don't lose braking performance while driving. So normal brakes would tend to get hot and then lose brake, uh, brake effect. Here, when the corners get tighter, you feel the limits of this vehicle. And here, <laughs> these uh, turning indicators on the steering wheel, occasionally you just hit them and then you activate the turning indicator while racing. That's of course not ideal. And whoa! Woo. Whoa! That happened. Interesting. You all right? Yeah. <laughs> so when this happens here, just try to hit the brakes <laughs> as soon as possible. Whoo! Wow. Uh, yeah, that happened. Very interesting. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've been doing this for ten years now, and I've driven all racetracks all over the world in so many different vehicles and yeah this literally never happened to me ever wow this is special yeah still kind of surprised um, of course the best thing you can do in these situations is just stay calm and hit the brakes as hard as possible um, I still have to rewind the video and see why exactly that happened it happened actually here it really leads me to one point I want to make so when you are in these tight corners, so there are basically two problems. And the first problem is the suspension. In this track mode I have activated, the thing is that it does get stiffer, yes, but you feel that the, the suspension is not really made for the track, you know. So it, it still leans too far into the corners. And the second thing is that the seats, they don't really hold you tight. So they have some bolstering and for the normal road use, they are perfectly fine. Yes, of course. But the thing is that here for the racetrack, they're just limited. All right, now we have switched to the other tires. This is now the racing setup. And these are the Goodyear Supercar 3R and 20 inch forged wheels. Of course, also the carbon ceramic brakes. So this is now the original track pack, full track pack with the track mode also activating. We have still set the handling to 4060, so more rear wheel bias basically. Of course, a 50-50 would be better handling in a way and safer, but we also want to make it comparable now. And I can already tell you so far, wow, these tires are a huge difference, especially when the turn gets tighter or so. I feel I have way more precision in steering, acceleration of course, yeah, that's great with both choices here. But the crucial thing is really when I turn here in and also when the turn gets tighter, I just have more precision and it's not 
that the rubber would be you know just moving everywhere so with the other tires that are still street legal in Europe at this point it was just kind of off you know this one here now feels more fitting for the racetrack um, suspension wise of course you still don't have like a true race car setup it's somewhat okay but you maybe also see it on camera the car does lean in somewhat in track mode it always leans in less and they also tune the software in a way that you have a different software setup when the car is realizing which tires you have actually on always <laughs> activating the turning indicators here once again yeah that's really distracting for, for track use definitely and here the acceleration out is really great and I also feel this this would be the setup here where I also lost control earlier and here now I have way more control actually well, one more time, acceleration and the brakes. Yeah, these carbon ceramic brakes, when you drive them on the road, they feel like you would be needing to push harder. So the brake feel is completely different indeed. But for the race rig, of course, they are a better choice because no matter if you are in the first lap or in the second, third or last lap, they always kind of feel the same. But on the road use, they might feel a little bit Odd. So this is really then something for the racetrack for sure. And wow, this acceleration is great. And yeah, when you want to use it on the racetrack, definitely needs these tires right here. Well, a lot of information today to process and what an experience. No doubt the acceleration is off the chart. It's yeah, it's like nothing else you can compare it to. It just goes and it's like sitting on a chair and someone does like this and then suddenly you're like 600 meters more in the front and you're like, what the hell has happened, you know? But on the racetrack, when handling and so plays a role, there you see it's not the specialty of this car, you know? You can't deny it. Even the track bag, even the track mode doesn't change it. It makes it more track suitable, but it will still not be a racetrack suitable car, you know what I mean? However, with these special semi-racing tires, it is way better indeed. So if you intend to take this car on the track, you need these special tires. With the normal tires, these, you know, the, the ones we've shown you earlier, it's really hardly controlled. You've seen it with myself. I really struggled with controlling it. Yes, I'm not a professional racing driver, but I have enough experience that I can say I'm a good driver. Of course, there are way better drivers, but the thing is also when you're like, you know, normal average driver you should still be able to control the vehicle with these tires here with the supercar 3r the special one the semi slack it is possible with the normal one uh -uh, don't go on the racetrack with the eu street legal ones this is also a very key finding here for today and of course also with the side support with the seats and so on so i wouldn't say it's a track suitable car as for the handlings Therefore, the traditional sports cars do better there, but acceleration-wise and the drag strip, this is the winner over everyone. So what do you think about the track pack and the track mode with the Model S Plaid? And if you want to see the pure street review with the full tour of the Model S Plaid with Autobahn and so on, and car front and rear and everything and trunk, tune in here or also check out the Model X Plaid.